championship. Interesting. Very interesting. A very big battle because Peter Vianzek, every time he goes out on this track, it's a big battle for the championship because he is the man that has been unstoppable for the last two years and the first round of this competition. He has looked like a man possessed for the last couple of years. No one's really been able to punch as high as him. And now he's in the top 32. And out in the top 32 would be a disaster for Vianzek, but also for Alex Holovnia. Huge statement here if he could take down the pound for pound best in Europe right now. This may be a top 32 battle, but both of these guys will definitely be treating this like a final because Holovnia knows he's up against a guy he probably would also meet in the final. So he's going to lose this if he doesn't go all out. There's no easy battle here. If Vianzek goes, I lose it here. Everyone's going to find a lot of points on this. So this is a very, very stressful battle for both of these guys. We get to see it play out right now. We certainly do through the chicane, through the gears comes Vincek, chased down by Alex Holivnia right now as they fire in. Holivnia already starting to lose ground as they come firing through that first inside zone. Holivnia though starts to rein it back, opens up the throttle, goes for the transition both down the hill. This is very nice from both guys at the moment. A little bit of separation. Holivnia would like to be a, a little closer now, but he's shortcutting the circuit. He wants to make a big dive on that final corner and he goes for it as he goes for wheel to wheel action against the champion across the line. Yeah, and again, it's going to come back to you might have been close, but how did you get there? And how you got there by jumping across on the racing line. So the line that the judges have put out there is not the fastest line around this course. We can see Halevnia up on the curbs uh, as much as he could to try and catch Peter Vianzek. And that's almost from the start. Vianzek was pretty flawless through the whole course. I couldn't pick one major error from Vianzek there at all. And you're starting to look at Halevnia. Look at it, even a tiny handbrake from Vianzek. Very fast, very dialed, super technical against every single zone. This is for me where Halevnia makes the mistake. Transitions too quick, gets caught on the curb, has to go on the inside of the track, and he's not really on any angle angle there and then even though he dives through at the end he's on the inside of the track trying to push out to the outer line of the track it's all a bit scrappy and all a bit of a mess from there and Vianzek looking like another run for him in the bag as good as he could do or as good as anyone could do including you Dave I'm definitely included me. Yeah. I, if I drove around this track, it wouldn't be as precise as he is drifting <laughs> around this track. But I'll tell you one thing about Vianzek. That's the thing about the champion. You know, everyone looks up to him now. And they're looking for any, you know, kinks in the armor. They're saying, there's got to be something that he's not good at. And last year, this track, he suffered a little bit here. He struggled a little bit here. He ain't struggling this weekend. He has learned from whatever he's had in his mistake. He crashed into Tuarna Kavi in the top eight last year here. And it made his championship a lot harder work than he wanted it to be. He's not going to be playing those mistakes again. And I think in that lead position, I think regardless of his chase, which we're going to see now, this is the bit that he has no control over. He's got to adapt to the chase. But when it comes to his driving ability and his lead run, there's nobody out there at the moment driving better than him right now. In my opinion, of watching practice and qualifying, yes, Heinehan has been pretty solid, but I still think Vianzek has a little bit more pace. I think, I think you're, you're right there, Dave. He does have the pace, but we will maybe see those head-to-head -head at some point this weekend in competition. But well, they're back on the line. Halivnia now to lead out Vincek. And Vincek knows all he has to do is keep that proximity, not make any mistakes in that chase and skip it door to door. And that is what he is an absolute master of. We get the green light. They're through the gears. Halivnia absolutely lights the tyres up already on the F22 BMW. Hops a wheel off the tarmac as he flicks it across the circuit through the initiation. Vincek's right with him. He knows he can't get lost in the smoke. He needs to keep on the door, and he does. He tucks that 15 right onto the back bumper, onto the door, down the hill they come. But the lead line from Halivnia at the moment is absolutely incredible. Goes for the transition, but Vincek's there, the door is open, and Halivnia is giving him the opportunity to chase perfectly as he fires into the final outside zone. Vincek on the inside, but he makes it work as he pushes on the rear wheel and turns him around. Now, that's the question. That's the question. Who is at fault? Did Olivia go on too much angle or did Vianzek spin him or was there a slowdown from Olivia? I'm not making any claims it happened too fast, <laughs> but that is not as clear cut as we thought. I was just about to say at this moment, before they got into that last wall run, that next year when we're doing the briefing, show this lead show and this, this. chase, because yeah. that was absolutely incredible from both of these guys. Now Vianzek backs off a little bit there and this is where it's all going to come down. Olivia is on power on the wide line as they go out to the edge of the track. Vianzek's catching. And he hits the oh front wheel. Oh my god! He hits the front wheel of Halovnia's car. But does Halovnia slow? Is that that's what they're doing? Well, the only way we're going to see is on top of the windscreen, Dave, for you guys watching at home. If you've not watched it before, we have a, an LED brake light to indicate on the top of the windscreen, front and rear, to show whether they're braking. He wasn't braking when he was hit. And from my perspective, he looked like he was on full throttle. He throttled. was on full throttle, yeah. Being. So let's just have a look again. He's on the right, right line. Halovnia is where he needs to be. Vianzek is climbing down the inside and he jumps forward. Vianzek hits the front wheel. Now, if he hits he the wasn't. door, he hits the rear quarter, he hits the rear wheel. Wheel, we got a debate on our hands, but front wheel to front wheel, Look generally... Look top of the windscreen. Look, yeah. top of the windscreen, no light. There's no braking but, from Halovnia. For me, Dave, what was astonishing was the way that the car 
of Vinsex suddenly gripped up and drove forward. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go back to a point that you made yesterday about the amount of rubber on that final outside zone. Did Vinsex car all of a sudden grip up and drive forward? Because he was on the inside line. Because he was on the inside line and the car just drove at Holovnia and there was nothing that Vinsex could do to slow it down. Well, it definitely wasn't intentional. And no. Holovnia has spun. So it's going to be this. Now, this could very easily go oh, back. Oh, now we've got a fire on um, Halivnia's car as well. What in the name of God is happening in this championship <laughs> right now? I don't know anymore. I try and be an expert. Bring me all this randomness. Can we randomness. do a rebrand for next year? Can we call it Drama Masters? Drama Masters, because I, yeah. no, I, I know if you look at Vinesec's face, he doesn't know. He doesn't know which way the judges are going to go here. Now, we've, we've, we've assigned fault. However, the judges are... Have, as fans. As fans. As fans. No, we can't make we any can't decisions. We can't make any decisions. The judges have looked at that very, very carefully. They also have, and they don't always show it, much more camera angles than we have. They have the onboard of both drivers. They have got more camera angles yep. from both drivers. So they're analysing it, and I can, I can hear through the floor, because they're a, a floor above discussion. us. A big discussion. A big argument going on right now on this one. And it looks to me like we've got a small fire in Holovnia's car, or a leak of some sort. Did it shut down? I, did it shut down? Did something happen? I mean, did the car shut off across the finish line? That could have been what happened, Ian. We couldn't hear it at the time. But we're going to get I, Becky Evans in there, because there's one person that can find out this for us. Becky, what happened on that last corner? Does anybody know? Dave, I'm not entirely sure if anybody knows right now what happened on that last corner. I'm going to have a little chat with uh, Alex here. Your car seems to be uh, leaking a little bit now. Is, is it your fire system that's just managed no, no, to pop no, no. off? This quick wash after my top surgery too. <laughs> what happened? This quick wash. Oh. This quick wash, yeah. <laughs> There's no problem with this car. Just quick wash after that. I mean, you know, that's exactly what you need. Um, can, you can you walk us through those last final five seconds there? Because everything was looking lovely and smooth. Your lead line was lovely. And then what happened? First and second run, I'll uh, use full throttle and then don't have tires for the last uh, corner. No tires. OK, so it was a case of you'd run out of grip and it was just turning, turning. OK, it's not your season this year, is it? This is a little bit difficult season for me, yeah. <laughs> but at least you're still smiling. Unfortunately, I mean, this is probably going to take a few minutes to clean up. But is your car, your car is OK, though? I don't know. OK, fine. I mean... Engine wash. Engine wash, he says. So far, that's so so far so good. Let's have a little chat with Peter. Peter, how are you? You're looking a little bit uh, nervous right now. Yeah, everybody loves top 32, huh? Uh, but yeah, it was a lot, a lot happened during that run. I thought that uh, it was okay till the, the very last moment when um, I don't know if I attack too much or he slows down a bit. But uh, I don't know. It's in judges' hands right now, honestly. After watching the cars, after it doesn't look like it was the cleanest one, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I felt like he slowed down a bit. I have also not uh, enough angle to um, not crash into him, but we both managed to, to cross the line a bit more sideways than we would like to, but <laughs> it is what it is. It was a good fun, and uh, we'll see how it's going to go through. OK, well, the judging decision has dropped in, so I'm going to throw it back to you guys. Thanks, Becky. Well, we have absolutely no idea what way the judge is going to go. We, we looked at the, the, the explanation from both guys there. It looked like there was tyre issues for Halovnia. Vyansek saying he might have attacked too much or did he slow down too much. We don't know. The judges have had a very long conversation on this. They've also had to make a decision. So who is going to go through to the top 16? And it is going to be... A split decision, but it's Alex Holovnia getting the decision. Alex Holovnia gets the decision and goes through to the top 16 championship blown wide open here in Sweden. And Kevin, I'm going up to you. You guys are having some arguments. Talk us through what way that split decision has gone. Yeah, very heated in the tower up here, just to trying to make that decision because that was a very, very tough one. So what we had to look at is, is the lead driver fulfilling his, his lead goals and is the chase driver fulfilling his lead goals? So basically what we looked at, Alex, yes, he had to have a drop off at a, a one wheel off on the start of the outer zone, but he got back onto his line at outer zone eight then for the remainder of it. So for us, um, he was fulfilling his zones. Yes, maybe he was running out of tires and he was uh, getting a little bit slower towards the end of that uh, zone, but 
in my opinion, he didn't do enough to actually warrant um, impeding the chase driver. However, when you look at Peter, he had a huge dive coming into the start of outer zone eight, and he had to shallow up angle and come way off the qualifying line to maintain that proximity with Alex. And therefore, in my opinion, then that's what caused the contact with the front wheel of Alex and therefore spun Alex going out over the finish line. So we deemed it to be Peter's fault overall because he was the one that caused the contact. I can see it, Kev. I can see it on the replay, and it makes perfect sense. And wow, we've had, you know, we've had an uppercomer from Sweden beat the World Rally Champion. We've had Connor Shannon, who had an engine failure yesterday, beat Zalewski, who had an engine failure. And now we've had Peter Vjainsek out in the top 32. And you're going to try and make any sense of this championship? Well, right now in the pits, man that rolled his car.